StreamYard versus OBS, which is best to live stream guests. I'm gonna show you how to do it on each today and talk about the pros and cons of each software. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you know when we have new content that comes out. If you ever have any questions on my videos, I live stream just about every day on my gaming channel. It's called The Worst Gamer on Earth. I'll leave a link at the end of the video and in the description if you want to come by, check it out, ask a question, or just hang out with me live. Now, if you're using Streamlabs OBS, this setup is already finished. It's ready to go. But if you're using OBS Studio, you're going to need to add a plugin. The links to these plugins will be in the description, but I'll walk you through the setup. The first thing I do is go to this OBS software page here. It's actually part of the forum. Then I click the release page on GitHub. Then scroll down to the OS you're using, whether it's Windows or Mac OS. There are two things you need to download and make sure are installed on your computer. The NDI runtime and the actual NDI plugin. So I download the NDI runtime file. Once you download it, you go to the location, you double click it, then you click continue. After clicking continue a couple of times, you can install it. Now that I have the runtime installed, I need to download the actual plugin file. To do that, I just follow the instructions. I download the plugin file for my Mac. I double click it or on Mac, you can run into this problem where it doesn't like it because it's from the internet. So you can right click on it and click open and then open again. Then I just follow through the installation. Once it's installed, you can open OBS Studio. If you click Tools at the top, you're going to see NDI Output Settings. That means you installed it properly. Let's go into Skype on the computer and set it up so we can use it in OBS. When you have Skype open, you want to go to Preferences. This is going to be located in different places on Windows and Mac, but it's going to have the same features once you open up your Preferences. Then we want to go to Calling. We want to click Advanced. And we just want to make sure this allow NDI usage is checked. And that's all we need. We can exit out of here. Now we want to add our guests. So we're going to go into Skype and click meet now to create a new meeting. In the meet now window, you can just copy this link out and give it to whoever you want to join this call. In this case, I'm going to paste it to a couple of different locations to invite a few guests. Then I'll go back into meet now. And I'm going to join the call. And you can see immediately Michael T. Panetta is already on this call. And there's my buddy Jelly Duck and Joe. So now we have three folks that are on this one Skype call. Next, I want to add them into our live stream. You can see here I've already added my camera and microphone into the live stream. So to add a guest, we're going to click that plus sign and we're going to go to NDI source. I'm going to type in the name of my guest here, in this case Joe, and I'm going to select Joe's input window. Then I'm going to click OK. You can see it's added Joe to the stream. All I have to do is size him up and then move his window behind my overlay and we're all ready to go so that people know who Joe is I'm going to add his name in text here so we're going to call this text Joe I'm going to select my font I'm going to put a little outline behind it then I'm going to resize it and move it into Joe's window next I'm going to add jelly duck so I go ahead and I click the plus button add NDI source I'm going to type in the name of the person I'm adding in this case jelly then I'm going to select Jelly Duck's window in the source name. Click OK. And there we go. Now I can just resize this. Now I'm going to add some text. Change the font. Put Jelly's name in there. Add a little black outline around it. Move it into place. And now I'm going to add Michael T. Panetta. So all I need to do again is click the plus. Go to NDI source. Select Michael T. Panetta's Skype input. Click OK. It adds that window. And then I'm going to move it where I want it, resize it, and move it down here below my overlay so he's set up properly. Then I'm going to add his text in here. The same way as we did the others, I'll select the font, put his name in there, put that outline in the text, move it to where I want it to be. And you can see it's not showing up there because it's actually below the proper location. So now I'm just going to reorder these windows so that everything is set up properly and everyone is in the proper location with the proper sizing. This seems like a long complicated process, but once you have NDI installed and you have an overlay set up, 
it's really, really easy to add these guests and the quality of the video connection and the quality of the audio connection that you get is absolutely awesome. You can see that using NDI also solves the problem with Mac having separate input devices for the audio. If I go down and I scroll through Audio Mixer, you can see each person has their own audio input and I can mute them individually by just clicking the little speaker next to their audio and it will turn it off. Next we're going to eject this out. I'm going to show you how to do this in StreamYard. I already have a broadcast created, so I just need to enter that broadcast. I'm going to put my display name in there, click OK. Then I can just click my image to add me into the stream. I go down and I click Invite, and I copy out the link. I paste that link to the individuals that I want to join my stream. Then I close that out, and we can see that I have three people in there, Jelly Duck, the Fantastic Joe, and Michael T. Panetta. All I have to do is click on their images to add them to my live stream. And then the buttons below the live stream can change the layout up to any way that we want. Now they don't look very accurate because they don't actually have four people in their live streams. But you can mess around with these and switch up exactly who has the bigger window or put us all in four regular windows. It's pretty easy to change the layout once you have them added in there. You can also mute their microphones by clicking on the little microphones by their pictures down below the layout section. So it makes it really easy to control someone's audio or mute it just in case. And that's really all there is to it when you're adding a person on StreamYard. Let's go over the pros and cons of each piece of software. We'll start out with ease of adding a guest. It's definitely a much more complicated process to add a guest to OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. There's no question about it. Hands down, StreamYard is really simple to add a guest to. Computer usage. OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS are both going to require you to have a pretty decent computer setup because you have to stream guests in, encode them, and then stream them back out. And this just takes a lot of computing power. It is what it is. With StreamYard, on the other hand, all you really have to do is stream video out. Everyone else is streaming into a central server and you're controlling the broadcast. So most of the CPU work is done on an external server, making it much easier to run StreamYard with a guest on a pretty low powered laptop. Audio input. For the first time in a long time, I can actually say that the OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS is much superior from an audio perspective, even on a Mac. Using Skype with its NDI source allows you to have each guest with a different audio input, adjust their volume accordingly, or even mute them individually. And that's pretty awesome. With StreamYard, you can't adjust a guest's volume or mix. All you can do is mute and unmute them options and layouts. Now the little bit of work that you have to do to set up your OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS Stream, this is where the real payoff comes. You can configure your windows in any way you want. You can change up the size of each person's box in any way you want. You can add any overlays, any layouts, or any text you want in any font you want, and it's really, really easy to do. On the flip side, StreamYard really doesn't have these options. They have a set number of layouts, and the text is what it is. It says the person's name and whatever text they have, and if you notice when you were watching it, you can't even really see the person's name, it just kind of blends in. And all you can really do about that is just changing the color of the text. So which software is right for you? Well, if you're using a pretty old computer, you don't have a lot of processing power, or you just want to do a fun live stream with a couple of friends and just put it out there, then StreamYards probably is for you. If you have a decent computer, and by decent, I don't mean it has to be anything spectacular. Believe me, I'm using a dumpster fire, and I still manage to add guests to my streams. And if you're looking to live stream pretty often and you want a lot more options, then I think OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS is probably a better choice for you. But it all comes down to what your live streaming goals are. Speaking of live streaming goals, I have a really big question for the folks in my audience. 
what are your live streaming goals? I ask this question because this channel is all about helping folks to become better YouTubers. And if I understand more about what your goals are for live streaming, I can create better content to help you. Do you use live streaming to accent the regular videos you put out on your channel and to give you an opportunity to connect with your audience? Or are you a full-time live streamer? And if you are a full-time live streamer, what sorts of live streams are you doing? Are you doing gaming? Are you doing variety? What is the purpose of your live streams? Let me know in the comments so I can create more content tailored to what your goals are as a YouTuber. If you want to learn how to create a dynamic video overlay for your live streams using After Effects, check this video out right here. If tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber something you're into, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.